Hi there. My name is Ling and I'm a foundation doctor working in Nottingham University Hospitals and I am part of this concept map project. This week we'll be bringing you a symptoms-based approach to cough. So, cough is a very common presenting symptom which you will come across a lot in your medical career. It is important to develop some form of clinical reasoning, some form of clinical acumen in sort of differentiating various clinical pictures of cough. So cough originates as a protective respiratory tract reflex. It is often self-limiting, but care should be taken to consider insidious causes such as malignancy, fibrosis, occupational health disease, and serious infections. It requires thorough history and examination, followed by carefully selected diagnostic tests. So well-taken history with good differentials in your head will be vital to guide the necessary investigations for diagnosis. So first off, we begin by formulating a list of possible differential diagnoses in our head for cough. And how we do that is we can do it via anatomy or by using the surgical filter, which employs the acronym vitamin CD. So using the anatomy approach, you can see we have split the pathologies according to where they lie in the respiratory tract. So you have pathologies that originate in the upper respiratory tract, in the bronchus bronchioles, in the lung interstitium or parenchyma, in the vasculature of the lung, or you can have cardiac and GI causes as well. And using the surgical filter, vitamin C, D, you can see that the diagnosis is classed according to the category that the pathology belongs to. Um, so you can have infective causes such as tuberculosis, pneumonia, infective exacerbation of COPD. You can have autoimmune causes like GPA or formerly known as Wagner's granulomatosis, good pastures, SLE, ILD. So at this point, feel free to pause this video and take a moment to process if this is new to you. Don't worry if you cannot memorize everything off by heart. Um, it is important to have a good thought process or good clinical reasoning first. So you should ask yourself when it comes to cough, what is the time cost? Is it acute or is it more of a long-standing cough? Then you need to ask yourself, is it productive of sputum? Is it a dry or wet cough? I personally often find this is the most important or useful piece of information when I clock patients in, in the respiratory admissions unit. Wet cough will often point to infection, um, obstructive lung diseases such as bronchiectasis, COPD, or fluid overload. Then you need to think to yourself, what are the characteristic features and are there any red flags? So it is important to rule out the red flags such as malignancy, TB, and vasculitis. So hemoptysis with constitutional symptoms such as night sweats, weight loss, fatigue, and fevers should get you thinking about TB. Other associated features such as fever, shortness of breath, wheeze, coryzal symptoms should get you thinking about other conditions as well, which we will explore in the next slide. So this is the concept map for cough. So I know it sounds or looks complicated, but I will go through with you. So basically once you've split your cough into whether it's acute or chronic, into whether it's productive or not, and into its associated features, you shall have a better idea of what could be going on. So for example, an acute cough that is wet and Productive of sputum should get you thinking about pneumonia, infective exacerbation of COPD, and acute cough that is dry with wheeze and shortness of breath should start to get you thinking about asthma, allergens or irritant exposure, or foreign body aspiration. An acute cough that's dry with coryzal symptoms should get you to start thinking about upper respiratory tract infection. An acute dry cough with fever and shortness of breath you should start thinking about COVID. So a subacute or chronic cough that's wet, productive of clear sputum, should get you to start thinking about cardiac causes such as 
left ventricular failure, mitral stenosis, bronchiectasis, or COPD. So in patients that you suspect bronchiectasis, you should start thinking about whether this could be a case of cystic fibrosis or cartogenesis as well. But cartogenesis is more rare. So in chronic cough with weight loss, hemoptysis, um, you should start thinking about cancer. Um, in the presence of constitutional symptoms such as night sweats, fever, you should start thinking about TB. And if you do suspect TB or once TB is diagnosed, you need to think about HIV, their country of origin, and their travel history. Lastly, in a chronic cough with hemoptysis, you need to remember your vasculitis. So you can have redness, which is also known as granulomatosis, polyangitis, anti-GBM, which is also known as good pastures, SLE. And think about your non-pulmonary causes as well, such as ACE inhibitor usage and um, GORT. And don't forget, lastly, in a chronic cough that's dry, you need to start thinking about interstitial lung disease as well. So, some key salient points. So acute cough is very common and usually will resolve. Persisting cough, however, should require investigation and it is not in keeping with simple infection. Think about your red flex, weight loss, hemolysis, fevers, night sweats. And these red flex should be excluded in your history first, as it might, be, it might point out to a more insidious or pathological cause. Um, chest x-ray is the most useful first-line investigation. It should be performed in all cases presenting to the admissions unit for cough. And do consider your non-pulmonary causes, such as ACE inhibitor usage. So this is a bit of an extra reading for you. If you would like to read into cough physiology, it is courtesy of Calgary Guides. So a bit of a top tip. Use these examples of concept maps and create your own one. Don't just memorize of us, but instead use this slide to help you create your own clinical reasoning, create your own thought process for when you tackle cough next time. And feel free to pause this video to see the concept maps at greater detail. And that's it, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for bearing with me. I hope this was useful and informative. Thank you very much.